So the IPC, Acute Food Insecurity Scale, divides up food insecurity, acute food insecurity, into five phases. Phase one is minimal, phase two is stress, phase three is crisis, phase four is emergency, phase five is famine. Those are inherently designed to inform decision support. So what types of decisions, what types of interventions should be the priority given whatever phase you're in? So what are those phases? Phase one, minimal, meaning uh, there's no major shock and people are not vulnerable to, to really any major shock. They're, they're okay. They might have chronic food insecurity challenges, but not acute. Phase two, stressed means there's some sort of shock which is stressing people's livelihoods. Maybe prices are slightly going up, or maybe crop production is slightly down, starting to stress them. So they're having to uh, make some uh, trade-offs in terms of capital investments versus uh, the, their dietary diversity and the like. But by and large, they're okay. And what we should be doing as a humanitarian development community is making sure that they don't slip into this phase three. And this phase three is what we call crisis. Fa crisis is a shock has happened. People are vulnerable to that shock. And when, when I say a shock, it might be a drought, it might be conflict, it might be an economic shock, it might be a tsunami, it might be an earthquake, any kind of shock. And people are vulnerable to that shock. And at phase three, they're having to trade off their livelihood assets to be able to eat. And they're starting to trade that off. And we can see that because we can measure uh, your livelihood, what we call livelihood coping strategies, if you're selling off capital assets like your cattle or your goats or uh, some sort of other means for you to get income. You're starting to sell that off so that your family can, can eat. Or you're actually eating less, and families will do this, you're eating less to be able to preserve that livelihood asset because you know your future depends on that asset. So we're able to, to detect that based on our, what we call, a whole suite of methodologies to measure food consumption. And that's phase three. That's what we call a livelihood crisis. And the type of implication for response is we should all be supporting people's livelihood so they don't have to make that trade-off. Phase four, emergency. Emergency is when people have now started to deplete their livelihood assets so that they have no choice. They have to eat less. They eat less in terms of dietary diversity, they eat less, in, which means quality of food, and they eat less in terms of calories. And we can detect that through malnutrition rates and slightly elevated mortality when we measure uh, crude things like crude death rate. And so we can detect that. That's emergency level. Literally, people are starting to die. People are becoming acutely malnourished. And, uh, and, and, and their livelihood assets are starting to be fully depleted. And that requires an emergency response. Um, that might mean not just livelihood support, but it might mean a direct transfer of food to be able to keep people from dying and becoming malnutrition, or a direct transfer of uh, financial resources so that they can make their own household choices. That's phase four, emergency. Phase five is a famine or catastrophe. And that's when the entire system is collapsed. That's when mortality rates are now elevated above what we call uh, two per 10,000 people dying per day. When malnutrition rates are above 30% global acute malnutrition. And when food consumption is so bad that uh, over 20% of the population in any given area are just not able to even eat enough food uh, to sustain themselves. It's a complete collapse of the system. And when famine is happening, it's not just a food issue. The whole society is collapsing. Uh, health, it's a health issue. It's a water issue. It's a sanitation issue. It's a protection issue. Because in such extreme environments, people are highly vulnerable to exploitation and, and violence of, of all kinds. And as I said earlier, there is no reason at all why this needs to exist. We, as a global community, can end this now. It's a matter of what we've gotten used to tolerating in the past, and now it's incumbent on us to change our mindset that this is not baked into humanity's uh, experience. We can solve it in the short term, and more importantly, with the right strategies and deploying of, of technologies, we can solve it sustainably in the long term.